Luke chapter 24 verses 46 to 53. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always, until the end of the world. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising God. Verse 48, You are witnesses of these things. It wasn't just the apostles who were witnesses. It was Mary Magdalene at the tomb, the eleven in the upper room, then to Thomas, on the road to Emmaus, to Peter, at the great commissioning, to Stephen, the first martyr, to more than five hundred just to mention a few of his personal appearances after the resurrection. This passage stresses the physical reality of the resurrection. A heresy is a rejection of any doctrine of faith by a baptized member of the faith. Docetism stated that Jesus was God behind a thin veneer of humanity. Thus his suffering was only play-acting, and his resurrection was simply a return to a completely spiritual existence with no bodily effect. But that belief is simply illogical and not historical. The letters of John combated this error when it speaks of how to test teachers. The disciples touched him. The marks of the crucifixion were visible on his hands and feet, and he even ate solid food with them. Notice that Jesus asked his disciples, including present-day believers, to be witnesses to tell others of his words and these historical happenings. Verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. What was the promise of the Father? It was the person and power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had come to establish a new covenant based upon promises given centuries before. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33, But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Ezekiel 36.26 A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take out of your flesh the hearts of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Verse 51. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. The ascension had three meanings. First, it was the ending of the flesh and the blood person of Jesus, but the beginning of a relationship to an everlasting person who is independent of space and time. Second, verse 52 tells us the disciples didn't leave the scene of the ascension without hope. Instead, they left with great joy, knowing that the Messiah would always be with them. Third, they also knew that when Jesus blessed them and left for heaven, that he was their friend, not only on earth, but also in heaven. They then returned to the temple in Jerusalem and worshiped. Luke's gospel ends where it began, in the house of God.